Welcome in everybody, welcome in. This is one of the first videos on my channel for the new Leviathan, new 10th edition, Warhammer 10th edition, uh, the box that Games which very, very kindly sent me to preview for you all. There are a ton of videos which I've recorded that will be released over the next few days. And uh, the first one, um, well, we've, we've already done the uh, conversion um, of this model, so you can go and check out that one. Um, right now, I believe I, I believe it's already up there, but this one is the the painting. Uh, we've got um, the three paints, the three greys that we used there to start off this painting. Now, this model, I converted it up. I wanted to do like a, a Dark Angel Risen Force to go along with Lionel Johnson that, um, that Games Workshop also, also sent. Uh, so I'm kind of painting him up as well for the, the leader of the uh, the force, but we've converted him up. He's got a little. We've removed the Imperialis from his chest, uh, added a little bit of rope, added some details and everything. And then obviously he's got his Deathwing Knight mace, the Census mace, um, instead of the sword as well. So it's really really cool, really really simple conversion as well. Uh, <laughs> do go and watch that video though, because I do completely mess up the conversion idea. Um, but yeah, it's quite good fun. So the uh, the this initial kind of highlighting that we're we're throwing on here, it's um, it's trying to get a um, a, a bit of tonality and uh, highlight placement going in. Uh, we are using, as you can see, we're using very wet paint, very thin down, uh, very watered down, and uh, and it allows me to um, blend it all together as well on the model. Um, and we're being very, very scruffy, very, very messy. Uh, you don't even really need to worry too much about the placement as such on this because we do go over and kind of paint it in. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how um, how bright you need to go on this one because we do. Uh, the, the idea was that I was going to do a, a a kind of a very weathered look. So. This is just an initial kind of highlight pass over, which we're going to uh, blend in with some pigment powders as well in the end, and then uh, paint some paint some highlights over the top. So you do not have to be neat, tidy, or anything with this. This is just an initial light placement um, over all the all the models. So hold the model underneath the light, so you can pick out where the light will be hitting. You can see the hot spots there, for instance. That's where the light is landing on the top of the. Um, shoulder pad and just kind of highlight around it some little squiggles some dots and some stippling um, but uh, that's what the uh, model ends up looking like and then we're going to play around with some Rivalcraft pigments now these are the, like absolutely uh, the best pigments I've ever used from Rivalcraft so these ones are great uh, dot neutral brown and Italian red earth are the two that we're going to use Italian red earth is fantastic for rust by the way so it's, it's uh, a very um, uh, it's it's a it's a great pigment for lots and lots of different uh, uses. So I will drop those links down in the description as well if you want to grab these. Um, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a pigment wash. Now this is a great way of putting and getting pigments onto uh, onto the models. Uh, we're just using water. This is just it's just distilled water. I've got a um, uh, a pot of this on my wet palette, uh, so I tend to have like a couple of. A couple of blobs of it on my wet palette for when I'm mixing paint on the wet palette as well. So I just kind of dragged it out of that with a pipette. Uh, it makes it up and then uh, just literally just slosh it all over. Now this is a basically you are creating a medium for the pigments to be carried onto the model and then as the water evaporates it leaves the pigments uh, in the recesses and you get that really nice kind of powdered matte dusty look uh, which is absolutely fantastic i use this a lot in my adeptus titanicus um it's it's a really really cool and different way of getting some some weathering and some some tonality onto uh, models so yeah just absolutely slosh it all over and then once it's dry we can do the same with the uh, the the other pigment as well so um the in terms of how much you need to water it down um, you, you saw how much I added. I didn't add. I didn't add a lot to, um, and you'll see again here. Like I don't add much into the little pot. You can get these little pots from Amazon. They're just uh, like my little airbrush mixing pots. Uh, so you don't add a lot. Um, I get like a, a, a tiny little spatula and uh, add a tiny little bit, and uh, and then add quite a lot of water. So because they're quite highly pigmented, it's literally just ground down pigment. Um, 
and because it's because they're so highly pigmented you don't need a lot uh, and you can water them down quite a lot so I would start I don't really know how much what kind of percentage it's probably something like 15 to 1 something like that uh, I think this one the the, the slightly brighter one I, I, I kept a little bit thicker um, and a little bit stronger in pigment um, but you can see when you when you mix it up you can see how strong it is just by kind of tapping it to the to the side uh, and seeing how how strong uh, the color looks uh, like there you can see how strong that color looks um, but uh, also once you've got it on the model if it does if it is looking particularly strong then you can um, add a little bit more water straight to the model uh, and then add a little bit more pigment or whatever and uh, adjust it as you go so uh, yeah have a play you, c you can't really go wrong with it if you get too much onto the model you can kind of flood the model and really really water it down sorry excuse me really water it down on the model so it's not like you're going to ruin the model but uh, this one so this is a slightly brighter red and uh, I'm playing I'm trying to apply this a little bit more selectively into recesses uh, areas where the, the kind of dust might kind of sit and settle um, I've no idea what the fallen slash risen might be looking like when they've come out of uh, hiding uh, but I just really wanted to do kind of like a battered uh, war-torn um, like the stereotypical kind of grim dark uh, look I wanted to just see this this is a, a, a different way of um, painting for me so I thought I'd just try this kind of pigment idea uh, and that's what we end up with uh, <laughs> and, and uh, to be honest like if this is something that you like uh, then stop here <laughs> and uh, and and drop some details on there paint some details on and leave it at that and I, I, I don't think it looks all that bad um, but what we are going to do is we're going to go in with the same colors uh, those three colors I've forgotten those colors again already but those three colors we're going to go in and um, highlight and give a little bit of light direction to some of the armor panels now so um, focusing on the top top areas and the areas which the light is going to hit uh, because the pigment is a little bit more matte it does pull some of the reflections out so it's a bit more difficult to see where the light is hitting uh, but if you if you just pay attention uh, you will see kind of like the little soft subtle glares um, from the from the light that you're painting with and uh, you can just apply those and, uh, and touch them up So initial, initially, the uh, the areas which we're going to look at are um, these two tilt plates and the shoulder pad, uh, in as, as well as the uh, chest paste. And we're just going in. We're going through those three colours. Uh, we're, we're not using much of the of the of the shadow colour, the darkest colour. That's pretty much just for just reserved for uh, some marks and chips, but. Um, uh, this is a uh, it's a slightly older brush as well, so we're not worried too much about getting like a nice sharp sharp point. So it's a uh, it's a size one Da Vinci brush. Da Vinci's uh, again. I'll put the link down below if you want to try out the Da Vinci brushes. They are my favourite, and I do ninety nine percent of my painting with a size one Da Vinci brush. They're absolutely fantastic. So uh, yeah, this this kind of dark grey that we're using, we're just using it to soften some of the edges of the pigment powder um, and uh, soften it in a little bit and then it obviously gives a, a little bit of um, shadow and definition to some of the areas as well so we'll just kind of build that up and work it into some of the areas very very similar to how you would kind of normally highlight up um, keeping the light volumes in the same shape as the surface that they are being painted onto just go, just go around. Just have a look across the whole model. Find all the kind of heavy, kind of almost like the tide lines. So if you find all the tide lines of the pigment, then you can just soften the, those those transitions down a little bit with the with the dark grey. And then, literally, we're just going to go in with a slightly lighter one, lighter grey, uh, and go in and and highlight it up a little bit more, uh, and uh, get some get some light volumes going in on all the areas. It's 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 quite a nice simple way of doing it like this uh, because you keep the uh, you do keep the 
the, the texture and the, and the kind of battered feel uh, rather than kind of going in and kind of glazing straight over and, and adding harsher highlights in. The head, uh, where, where the head is, the head will be a separate video because I've been uh, asked to do a a video on painting faces uh, and the head was a perfect example for that because it was it was a nice simple simple head so the head is left out for that reason so that video will be coming uh, probably later today uh, if not tomorrow but the uh, the where where the head sits uh, in that helmet section of the terminator that's the kind of the focal point that we want so we want the tilt plates on either side and particularly the the collar and the shoulder pads to to be a much brighter, uh, much brighter grey up towards that uh, that top side, uh, and then this is this is neutral grey coming straight in here with some neutral grey to try to to lighten everything up, and making sure I've not got too much paint on the brush. Uh, it does actually look like I've got an awful lot of paint on the brush there. I needed to probably give it a quick clean, but just little soft marks uh, going in and squiggling. Uh, what what the Position of these marks are exactly the same. It's just getting a little bit smaller um, area in terms of the light volume. But some of them, as we get further out and away from the light volume area, so like this bit here, uh, all I'm doing is I'm looking at marks which are already on the armor uh, and kind of accentuating and highlighting them with these little marks. So they're not random. They are very much following... Uh, marks which are already on the armor um, apart from when we're building up a light volume so like the uh, the light space on the top of the tilt pad and uh, the nice little circular uh, light volume on the shoulder pad those ones are just being built up but as soon as you go away from those you're looking for little marks which you can you can just highlight and, and draw attention to almost like scratches And there's the collar as well, trying to make sure that we're bringing attention and focus to the collar and then therefore the head when it's in there, when it sits in there. The head does uh, kind of finish this model off really nicely. It's a nice nice little uh, nice finish. So it doesn't need much edge highlighting on this. There's, it tends to be uh, a little bit just to draw attention and separate the panels out a little bit. Um, and a, a, a little neat edge highlighting can really finish off the look of the model as well and it gives it it gives it some detail as you're looking at it just little taps here and there uh, down the edges uh, now this tilt plate uh, i am actually going to put a green stripe on this because uh, i had um, i've I put some transfers on later so i get a number one uh, for the first company on one side of the tilt plate and then the uh, the other tilt plate does get a green um, a line going across it, uh, just literally just these these green paints. So we've got uh, black green from Vallejo, which is one of my favourite dark green paints to work with. And the same way as we were doing with the grey, we're going to start by softening any of the tide marks of the uh, the pigment powder wash. It was an interesting way of doing it this 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 way actually. I, I wonder if I was to do it again, I do wonder whether I would put the pigment over after I've done the whole thing and put it on. A little bit more selectively rather than kind of squashing it all over and, and smushing it all over the entire model and then painting over it and working it into the model sort of thing whether I could paint the whole model normally and then add like the pigment wash almost like a, a, an oil wash and a uh, or a contrast wash at the end after it so it'd be an interesting interesting to see um, when I do another one because I'm going to do some more uh, it'd be interesting to see if I if um, I do it the opposite way, whether it comes out and ha has the kind of the same feel and look to it. Uh, I think it will. I think I think it. Uh, I think it might be an interesting way. So if you want to try that as well, if you want to uh, do all this painting first and then add the pigment wash afterwards, uh, you might find it uh, softens some of the transitions down a little bit. Just be careful how much you add on. And uh, these kind of highlight areas as well. The lighting when I'm working on models. They tend to be it's from my photography background. Uh, I always have the light coming from camera left, uh, camera right, sorry. So from the right-hand side of the screen, that's that's where you can imagine where the light is coming from. 
so any of the highlight areas I'm adding um, with that in mind um, so on the right hand side of the model tends to be and uh, these ones are uh, just little light volumes which we're working up now these the green paints these two green paints in particular are very good for kind of blending in because they're not very opaque they're a very translucent paint so they're quite easy to kind of stipple in in this kind of style and uh, get a nice soft transition so uh, when you initially highlight it looks quite harsh there it looks quite bright but that will soften down as the paint dries so you can be you can be quite aggressive with the first highlight and then as it uh, as it dries and softens and fades in you can then go back in and tighten up that highlight with each successive kind of coat um, so it's very much like a, a two or three passes of, of that highlight and uh, warpstone glow for instance is a is a shocking paint for opacity so it's a really good one to uh, to use for that now any cloth and uh, rope and anything like that we start with we start with xv88 and I, I believe it is carrick stone and screaming skull which we then highlight it with um, so it's a, a very very simple xv88 uh, coat first um, work it in nice and smoothly uh, don't have too much paint on your brush these all these paints which i'm using in the in the painting are watered down on the wet palette they're probably uh, about 50 50 water to paint the the, the gray might have been a little bit less than that just so i could uh, have a nice strong mark over the pigment because the pigment tends to it tended to kind of soak it up a little bit um if the paint was was too thin so uh, the the greys and the greens weren't maybe maybe 75 percent water 25 percent uh, no, sorry 75 percent paint 25 percent water um, but uh, when we're painting these so we're, we're keeping the direction of the brush when you're painting these like little um, purity seals and the cloth and everything we're keeping the direction going across the the the, uh, the paper so that you've got a little bit of grain and granularity to it uh, same up there look at it, uh, it highlights really really uh, easily and simply when you're kind of painting across it like that and you get some uh, nice little uh, details and, and uh, striations and lines on the paperwork the parchment it's very very easy to do this sort of stuff again don't have too much paint on your brush uh, otherwise it'll kind of blob on there and you'll you'll lose all the detail now this is one of my favorite golds it's a uh, necro gold from uh, scale 75 uh, it's a little bit of a greeny gold which i think would i thought would work really well with this because you've got the colder blue and then you've got the green shoulder pad from the dark angels and now and then subsequently like the green green gold uh, style now the, the gold is going to get um, a little bit of weathering as well on top of it and I do use a little bit of artistic license and <laughs> and weather the gold with uh, some some kind of turquoise verdigris, uh, green verdigris rather than because um, because gold doesn't really rust or anything. So I'm just kind of using a bit of artistic license just to show a bit of detail. Uh, but uh, yeah, ex necro gold it, uh, it it does cover very very well. It's watered down just a little bit and um, you can um, just kind of catch all the highlights on this so it's already got some of the the pigment in the recesses um, so we, we're mainly this is going over and just kind of highlighting and catching all the uh, the upper edges as you can see here it's quite nice and neat to do uh, and does make a very very big impact actually quite uh, straight away So do that over all the gold and then we're also going to do the census the mace as well we're going to do that nice and bright gold as well and we can really push the highlights on that mace as well because it's a nice big gold ball on the end of his uh, on the end of the mace head so it'll be a really good focal point as well we'll just go around find all the little bit of go little gold bits and uh, just imagine that rather than highlighting uh, rather than painting the whole surface just kind of go in and just touch the uh, touch the highlight area so we're not flooding the area um, we're leaving some of that pigment in the recesses as well and just making sure we're going in and giving the the hint that it is the gold um, gold insignia and gold piece on the armor crux terminatus of course on the uh, on the shoulder pad i do like these 
but necro gold once it's watered down it does flow really really nicely um i would always try and water down metallics as much as you can when you're using them with a brush they um the, the metallic flecks in the paint tend to uh, well they will um cut the uh, bristles and uh, so they will damage the bristles a little bit as you uh, as you paint with them so the more kind of lubrication you can get on the paint the better uh, which is why a little bit of water always helps it just kind of adds that little bit of lubrication and helps the paint come off the brush uh, a little bit and so uh, it, uh, it prevents uh, too much damage happening to your brush I'm sure everybody who's kind of dry brushed a bit of silver all over um, some metal parts will, uh, will remember how, how bad the brush looks after it so yeah a little bit of paint just just helps that metallic paint come off quite nice and quickly now this, this is Galvor back red uh, which is an absolutely gorgeous nice warm red uh, it's a nice dark warm red uh, which is a great base tone for uh, a Mephiston red highlight this is just going on all the weapons and the purity seals and uh, I decided to make the the mace handle, uh, the the cloth on that handle red as well, so same thing. Throw that over there, and then this is the verdigris. So yes, gold doesn't gold doesn't um, weather, uh, it doesn't patina or anything like that. But uh, maybe this is like a it's got a little bit of brass in it. I, I don't know, but uh, I I just think sometimes when you've got a battered look like this, a little bit of verdigris on the gold does look does look really cool so this is just turquoise from Vallejo um, there's also uh, another one of a, a favorite of mine it's, it's basically like Sotek green uh, but another favorite of mine is um, uh, blue green I think it is uh, also from Vallejo it's a little bit lighter than this so if you've got a if you've got something that needs a little bit more punch or you've got some a bit more room for some lighter verdigris then um, then, then blue green is also a great great color for verdigris um, don't use blue. I don't know why people use blue for verdigris. Verdigris is green if you go and have a look at some copper and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is really, really thin down, really thin down. Um, and uh, turquoise, particularly this uh, Vallejo turquoise, it's quite. It seems to be quite highly pigmented, so you can you can really, really thin it down. This is um, just an absolute ton of water um with with very little paint on there so it's probably i don't know 10 parts port 10 parts water to one part paint um and you can see how how strong it is when you kind of wash it in um but then it does dry it does kind of soften a little bit uh but uh yeah so slosh it all over the gold i think the census of it in particular the uh, the nice mace does look particularly cool with the with the verdigris on it um, and you can see how thin it is it's, it's running into absolutely every crevice <laughs> running everywhere so yeah just wash wash all the uh, gold and um, once it's once the wash has completely dried once the verdigris is dried you can go back in with something like necro gold again for a quick highlight uh, and i also use vallejo model color um sorry metal color gold as well which is a very very it's almost a silver gold it's quite a nice paint to use but it's incredibly thin so just be careful when you do use it to highlight that it doesn't run into recesses and ruin the verdigris now we've got the transfers on now so we've got the the one from the first company first company of uh, deathwing terminators and we have the dark angel uh, transfer on his uh, shoulder pad as well as you can see there and we're just going in with some dark grey, that first initial dark grey. Uh, I'm using dark grey on the shoulder pad as well, just because green doesn't cover very well over white. So I will go in initially and create some chips and some damage uh, with a grey and then go back over it with a green just to give it a bit of colour. Um, so yeah, if you notice, when if you do try and chip over white with green, it'll go very, very bright straight away. So it's it's sometimes better just to go in with a with a with a darker, um, more opaque colour and just hit it and knock out that white, and then you can go back in with a green and just give it that little bit of a hint of green colouring. Um, in terms of how to weather, uh, I, I wouldn't try and do too much. Um, it's mainly rather than kind of trying to do scratches across it uh, it's mainly just looking at edges and just taking out chunks of a straight edge so if you if there's a straight edge for instance the top of the wing 
um, or the edge of the sword, uh, things like that. Just try and take out that straight edge. Um, so I think that's what you should focus on the, the majority of the time. Um, and then scratches across the whole thing, maybe limit yourself to one scratch. Um, yeah, tend to, tend to kind of chip away at the edges rather than scratch all the way across it. Don't do that too much. So these are the two paints that we're going to use to highlight up the rope and the parchment. Really, really simple, and uh, just just catch catch the uh, the highlight area. We want the rope to be quite bright up towards where the head sits. Um, so we're going to focus on the top two um, bits of rope. And you'll notice as I'm highlighting here, I'm actually highlighting perpendicular to the rope. So I'm not highlighting uh, along the highlight uh, line of the rope. I'm highlighting across it, and that's just to uh, that's just to show the strands of the rope on the inside as it's twisted. So we're highlighting and giving it a bit of uh, rope texture there as well. You can really work on textures um, and highlights like this just, just with um, the direction in which you're painting. So whichever, whichever direction you're painting um, your, your brush strokes are going you can add texture. Same when you were doing the parchments as well. So when you paint the parchments make sure that your brush strokes go across uh, and you get a nice little kind of texture uh, going on those as well um, in the same way uh, as you would here. So we're going up the uh, highlights, so this one's Screaming Skulls, same one. And same same idea, we're just going to kind of highlight and paint across those, the strands, to give a bit of texture to the rope. Remember this is a, a green stuff rope that we sculpted and added onto the chest as well, so any kind of little little help you can give green stuff to tie and tie it in with the model uh, is always going to be beneficial so little little marks uh, and we, there's there's more marks up towards the top side of the uh, of the rope you can see here we're not adding that many marks down up towards the uh, the lower end of the of the rope because we want the focus up to, to be up towards the top so there's plenty of plenty of marks and plenty of um, highlights up at the top again to keep the focus up around the head which is great it is a fantastic uh, fantastic model I'm not entirely convinced about the, by the rope actually um, I, I think I maybe when I was removing the Imperialis I think I maybe should have left the skull in the centre and given the uh, given the the chest piece just a little bit more detail um, either that or it just needed some more battle damage painted on I don't know what do you guys think there we go, there's the rope. And uh, next up, just to, so this is just to seal the the pigments in a little bit more. We've, um, uh, I, w I wanted to do a little bit of glazing, so I glaze in uh, a, a little bit of black just into some of the recesses. And if we're glazing, I didn't want to kind of reactivate the pigment, so I just sealed all the pigments in. Like normally, if you do um, if you do a pigment wash after, um, at the end of all the painting, it, you really don't need to seal it. The paint's not going to go anywhere. Uh, sorry, the pigment, the pigment's not going to go anywhere. You're not going to rub it off or anything. Um, same way as if you use pigments on bases, they're not going to. You don't need to seal them in. It's fine. Uh, so this is pale grey blue. This is a final little highlight. I just wanted a little bit more contrast. Um, uh, this is watered down a fair bit, so it's not giving as strong a mark as it could. And uh, we're just doing very, very soft and very gentle little taps around, giving some uh, highlights. Don't be too heavy with this it's it's very easy to kind of be a bit heavy-handed with the brush here so this is quite a good little practice to see if you can keep um, uh, gentle uh, gentle uh, taps and uh, movements with the brush so that you've got nice small um, small marks as you're as you're highlighting uh, and it's the same way as when we were highlighting before I'm really looking at the areas and the, some of the marks on there and just exaggerating and highlighting those little marks having the brush run alongside the marks, running along the marks. Uh, tap, tap, tap around the edges, the uh, like edge, <laughs> move a little bit of fluff. Um, edge, edge highlighting like this is dead, dead easy, particularly when you're painting like little battered armors because you can just kind of tap, tap, tap around the edge and you end up with a nice little highlight line. 
you can go crazy you can do these little highlight lines all over the whole model if you wanted to it would give uh, it would give a little bit more detail again to the to the model and have it uh, stand out a bit but uh, i wanted to try and keep the the details a little bit lower a little bit less so the bottle didn't look too busy uh, because it's already got quite a lot of texture and detail on it as a whole and i didn't want it to get just too messy and too busy uh, too much going on so it's just very very little uh, taps and uh, marks all the way around the model the same uh, upon the uh, tilt plates as well just building up those highlight areas so following the same areas that we were doing the light volumes of when we were doing the highlights on the armor plates and you'll notice that when I'm highlighting with this it's just going straight into the center now this is I, I cheated a little bit there I always say don't lick your brushes um, to do as I say not as I do I, I basically I, I lick the brush there just to kind of water down the paint a little bit and turn it into a bit of a glaze so I am now kind of glazing this this is a very thin um, I'm calling it kind of like a heavy glaze so I was just glazing in a highlight and dragging that glaze up towards the top edge uh, of the tilt tilt plate uh, it's, it's, it's a cheat uh, don't do it uh, mix your glaze on your wet palette but that's that's why I was able to kind of get that nice soft um, glaze highlight up towards the tilt plate looking pretty cool I like him now the next up uh, we're just going to do some highlights on the red this is dead dead easy like my fist on red is such a nice highlight to work with um, particularly over like those scale four back uh, it's a really really soft paint anyway and you tend to get a, a, a very nice transition when you're painting with it so really simple keep the uh, keep the brush strokes nice and long and uh, always have them finishing where you want the highlight to be a little bit stronger which is down towards the front of the uh, of the the gun um, so it's this is that we're highlighting the gun we're highlighting the uh, the strap and the grip on the mace and also any purity seals as well uh, and it's it's, it's 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 a lovely it really is a lovely kind of highlight to put on the galvor back and it just gives it a nice bit of richness to the red it's very very cool very very easy to do um, and then some edge highlights as well just to kind of tie it all in as well so this is this is still my fist on red you'll notice that it's kind of softened it out already like the first coat has, uh, has kind of blended in and this is just uh, same again this is just another coat of Mephiston red um, and uh, we're just building up those layers building up the richness of the red and I, I don't want to go too bright with this so it's pretty much staying as, as Mephiston um, you might uh, you could get away with adding a couple of dots of Evil Sun Scarlet Evil Sun Scarlet is my kind of go-to highlight after Mephiston but I don't think I do it on this at all this just stays as uh, Mephist and Red, um, I, I believe anyway. I don't think I go red to any um, uh, any evil sons. Same with the purity seals, just add some little dots. So when you're painting purity seals, it's quite interesting that you can get a lot of texture, the same way as we did the rope. You can get a lot of texture just by kind of dot highlighting the purity seals. So as you're going around the edge, just kind of dab and dot the highlights in, and you get a really cool kind of waxy highlight uh, line on them. It's a really easy way again so rather than highlighting with in one big block you're highlighting in little uh, in little dots uh, in little lines in little sections in little scribbles anything like that and gives a bit of texture and uh, and interest to the model something that doesn't look anything that you can do that makes the model look different to how everybody normally sees models is really really cool like be different not better uh, that's a, that's a um, a saying that uh, was was in my photography life and career for a long time be different not better so if you can be different with the way that you're painting it it automatically it will automatically stand out and look cool so uh, being different here was adding those little dot highlights to the armor uh, adding the striations and the the uh, the line highlights perpendicular on the rope and then adding the little dot highlights on the wax it's really really cool nice and simple now here is the so this is Necro gold again, and then the uh, the final highlight on the gold is just some um, it's Vallejo metal color gold. Uh, so it's designed for the airbrush. It's very very thin, 
so I, I tend to use it in a well palette. Don't put it on don't put it on your wet palette at all because it's already very very thin. It will run all over the place, and it doesn't need to be any more thin. So I put a couple of drops in the wet palette, let it kind of dry out a little bit, and then kind of mix it back up again. Uh, this is a gorgeous highlight color. It's a really nice highlight color for gold. Uh, it's incredibly silver. Um, it's just got a tiny little bit of warmth in there, so it's really good for picking out any kind of highlight points. And uh, all I'm doing is I'm just dragging the brush over at some highlight spots. The census is a really good one to kind of push on this, and you can get a really nice kind of highlight circle on that uh, on that top edge. And um, any top edges that like are on the crux terminators here, uh, and on the skull you want that nice like highlight spot. Um, a little bling point um, that you would paint on when you were doing non-metallics you can do exactly the same thing with this as well because remember this has also had a coat of matte varnish which will have knocked the gloss level back so uh, the any metallics on here will have uh, kind of lost a little bit of the shine so any highlights that you're putting on this now really really kind of like jump out and make a, a nice big strong impact so um, again, just hold the model underneath the uh, underneath the light, and wherever you can see the the metallic trying to shine, you can kind of see it on the shoulder pad there. Anywhere that it's that the that the metallic is is shining, just add a couple of little dots of this and uh, and add the highlights in. It's a really really cool way of uh, of doing metallics. Controlling the gloss level of metallics uh, when you're doing true metallic painting is, is really important in my opinion So if you can kind of knock that back with a bit of matte varnish before you put the final highlight on it's even easier. It's even cooler uh, So uh, yeah, just go around uh, highlighting all the gold and then you're ready for Pretty much the, the the final thing is is the head now the head I'm going to do separately and do a separate video on the head because uh, I was I was kind of challenged on Twitch to paint a uh, to paint a head nice and quickly, so I've done. I did the whole head uh, and the, the 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 whole kind of premise on it is is painting a nice quick quick face slash head in ten minutes. So it's going to be a nice quick video, um, and uh, you can follow along to that one. That uh, will be up uh, either tomorrow or uh, next couple of days, and uh, just kind of finish off that finish off the look. But uh, I hope you like the video. It's really really cool. I'm going to do some more of these. I've got the rest of the Terminators and the Marines from the box, uh, which I'm going to be doing up as well. I'm going to be do definitely doing a couple more of the Risen models, and uh, I'm going to be taking some of them and adding them to my Dark Pharaon force as well. So keep an eye out for the Dark Pharaon color scheme. I'm, I'm going to do a fair few um, uh, videos on my Dark Pharaons as well, so because they've not really seen. They've not been on <laughs> on YouTube yet, so it's quite exciting to kind of share those. But uh, yeah, this is the final final little highlights on the gold. The cape uh, cloak was done in exactly the same way as the parchment, so that XV88 all the way up to Screaming Skull, the same same kind of principle, and the same idea uh, with adding the striations uh, and the texture with the brush strokes, and uh, that's that's kind of how that ends up. Um, and there's the finished model. Uh, it's looking very kind of raw, scary. Uh, I do go in and touch up the eyes a little bit because one of the eyes is a little bit blobby. Um, after the after the uh, the YouTube video, I painted the eyes live on the YouTube video. But uh, there he is. He's all finished. And uh, yeah, I, I I do like the model. It's very very cool. The base was really simply done. That is Vallejo um, texture paste with a little bit of sand. Uh, drizzled on top of it and then you let that dry and then I, it's just another pigment wash so it's the uh, whatever the rust color was was it Italian red earth I think it was Italian red earth so I'll mix up a pin pigment wash of Italian red earth and then just uh, just just flooded the base with with that pigment uh, it's really really cool it, it could probably use a little bit of a tuft on there as well but ultimately yeah, I think that's that's looking pretty good um, so uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, they are there are plenty of videos coming up about the Leviathan stuff. I've got kit reviews on pretty much every single kit in the box, which is fantastic for in my opinion. Um, the, the, the box is great. The the models that are coming out of the box, I I, I try to uh, I have to try and rein in the excitement a little bit on some of the uh, the reviews. But I hope you enjoy them. Um, please drop me a like and a subscribe. Share this video uh, with your friends if you think they might like it. And I will see you uh, online and on Twitch.
for uh, some more Leviathan painting as we get uh, more ready for 10th edition. I'm, I think out of all the models and armies I've got, I think I'm most excited to get my Drakari back on the tabletop. So we'll probably try and do some uh, Drakari painting on Twitch. So that's twitch.tv forward slash Chris Frossin. And uh, you can find all my all these painting videos will be live on my Patreon a day earlier. So that's patreon.com forward slash Chris Frossin. Exactly the same. And you can find me on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, sorry, Twitter and Instagram at Chris Frossin as well. So any support that you would like to throw in, then uh, you are more than welcome to do that. If you would like to grab a copy of Leviathan when it comes out, then I will put my affiliate link for Element Games in the description as well. If you could grab it from there, that would be amazing and very much appreciated. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care, and I look forward to seeing all your painted Leviathan models on Instagram in the next few days. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye-bye.